Expectations can be a double-edged sword. On one hand, a healthy amount of buzz prior to a game's launch keeps it fresh in people's minds and can help push initial sales. At the same time, higher expectations also mean that the backlash will be twice as potent if said game delivers anything other than an incredible experience. With a pedigree that includes the popular Halo series, expectations were stratospheric to say the least for Bungie's new game Destiny. So did the reality of the game meet those expectations? The short answer is not quite, though the foundation certainly is there for Destiny to eventually do so depending on how the game evolves from here. At its heart, Destiny is a grand attempt to merge two different beasts, each with a rabid yet distinct following. One is the first person shooter, a genre that Bungie made its name on thanks to a certain hand super soldier named Master Chief. The other is the massively multiplayer online game, which the company doesn't have quite a track record with. It's a proposition that the company should get props for even attempting. There's a reason you don't see a lot of high-profile games from big publishers that combine the two. It's a risky proposition that's tough to pull off. The Mass Effect series, for example, did great in merging third-person shooting mechanics with role-playing elements, but even that game had a tightly controlled and curated campaign that didn't have to account for other players randomly popping in and affecting the environment as you did the story. In contrast, Destiny has player participation sewn into its core. It's not just a matter of creating a team of players to help you get through the campaign like you did in Halo or Gears of War. Instead, you can run into a larger number of players beyond your own lonesome when playing solo or your three-man fire team when playing as a group. This premise is potentially Destiny's greatest strength in distinguishing itself from the typical shooter. At the same time, it is also the game's greatest weakness. As someone who has sunk a lot of time in MMOs, one of the most fun aspects of Destiny is running into random players in the game's various locales as I go through the story. It's especially fun when you end up with large impromptu gatherings in open maps and help each other take down an enemy horde or the occasional large target. Then again, that's more the exception than the rule. Most of the time, I rarely run into other people except the occasional one or two players during the campaign. I don't know if it's because I'm on a next-gen console with a lower install base, but the result involves lonely jaunts by myself in the game's various areas with nary a soul in sight. It's a shame really, as the game's locales are truly a wonder to behold. One thing Destiny does very well is graphics and area design, featuring locales with rich detail and, for the most part, lush color palettes that stand out from the grays and browns that soak most modern shooters. The empty spaces are compounded by the lack of matchmaking for the campaign portion. You have strike missions that pit your team against tougher hordes and bosses, but none for the regular story. This means you're at the mercy of your friends list and your buddies schedules when forming teams for the regular campaign. In my case, I only have one friend who plays this game on PS4, and it happens to be some random guy who friended me after I persevered with him to beat the Fogoth strike mission for the first time. The campaign also can feel repetitive, as most missions seem to end with you fighting off enemy hordes while your robot sidekick hacks a terminal. As a mostly solo player with a squishy warlock, I automatically start to feel traumatized any time my ghost starts scanning a machine and immediately look for defensible space. The fact that errors get recycled also adds to the feeling of repetition. Speaking of strikes, these missions are actually one of the most fun aspects of the game. A fusion of campaign and horde elements, strike missions let you partner up with two other folks for a pickup style blitz against stronger foes while completing objectives. At its best, strike provides a nice adrenaline rush as you work with your team and back each other up while surviving the enemy onslaught. It can definitely provide plenty of did you see that moments as you pull off a clutch takedown of foes and ally revives as the last man standing. At the same time, the boss mechanics also can induce plenty of grief. Unlike the more fleshed out bosses of games such as Lost Planet 2 for example, bosses in Destiny have pretty simple movesets. Instead, most of the challenge comes from their heavy damage, immense health pool, and the swarms of enemies that can be thrown at you while fighting them. That guy who friended me, for example, was abandoned by his original two teammates after Fogoth, the untamed bullet sponge cake, made them rage quit. I'm assuming it was either because of the last enemy wave or the ensuing massacre that can happen if you happen to run out of ammo and need to search for it. The shooting mechanics for Destiny, meanwhile, are rock solid. If there's one thing Bungie can hang its hat on, it's the actual shooting in the game. Weapons have a nice feel and did what I wanted them to do without getting in the way of the shooting experience. The game provides several options for primary and secondary weapons as well as a few heavy weapon types. The addition of elemental mechanics also adds to the overall strategy for armaments and taking down bosses and foes. You can even upgrade weapons the more you use them. But the only thing I'd like to see is a bit more diversity among weapons of the same type. Except for damage and skills for example, the scout rifles I got at the beginning of the game felt the same as the ones I got closer to endgame. 
I also like the enemy designs, including the addition of more fantasy-style wizards and zombie-ish thralls. It's one part that makes it a bit different from generic shooters, though the AI is admittedly a bit simplistic. The design for the different classes also look nice. It almost feels like Guardians of the Galaxy meets Halo. Although there are differences in movesets and abilities between the Hunter, Titan, and Warlike classes, you don't have the same clearly defined roles as MMOs. The Warlike, for example, is the closest thing to the Mage classes I normally play in MMOs, but you don't have a trinity of, say, tank, damage dealer, and healer in this game. You can have a fire team of three Warlocks and still do good. Heck, I primarily soloed the entire campaign with my Warlock and I still did fine. Like MMOs though, you'll need to do some grinding to get good gear. Loot also is more rationed out and does not pop up a plenty like they do in Borderlands or Diablo, so you'll need to spend more time looking for rare stuff. In fact, the real grind really doesn't start until you reach the soft cap of level 20. From here you can level up by acquiring modes of light and using them on your items. You can also eventually take part in six-man raids which will test your destiny skills to the utmost. Folks who like challenging other players in multiplayer meanwhile can pick from various modes that include staples such as Team Deathmatch and Control. Doing so lets you earn experience and points you can use for special Crucible equipment in the Tower Hub. The Crucible also tries to give low-level players a chance against higher ones by normalizing gear and stats though you still keep abilities and certain progression bonuses. Overall Destiny is more like a launch pad than a finished masterpiece. Like another high-profile new shooting IP, Titanfall, it feels more like the foundation for something bigger down the road. Competitive multiplayer is solid for the most part, though it doesn't add anything new or unexpected. The campaign, meanwhile, introduces fresh ideas for a shooter, but needs some fine-tuning to allow all the players walking around Destiny's always online garden to actually find each other much easier. One advantage Destiny does have over Titanfall is that the latter is pretty much locked in its ways until the sequel. Destiny, meanwhile, can hopefully do what other successful MMOs have done before and build on its foundation by adding new content. It doesn't have the drill-down focus of a shooter nor the grand sense of exploration or community of a good MMO, so it might be a hard sell for purists of both genres. If it manages to bring together the best elements of those two game types together, however, then it still has a chance of realizing its destiny as a game-changer in the gaming space.